I woke up today to some huge Stellar Lumens news that honestly blew my mind. The Stellar team basically admitted they had a big mess under the hood, and they just announced a fix for it. When a project comes out and says, yeah, our setup was kind of a nightmare for developers, but we're changing it. You know it's serious. This isn't just any update, it's something that could change how people build on Stellar, and maybe even how we, as XLM holders, ultimately benefit. If you're holding XLM like me, or just watching from the sidelines, you'll want to hear this one through, because what Stellar just did with their tech might be the quiet game changer we've been waiting for. So, here's what happened. Just a couple of days ago, on December 2nd, 2025, Stellar Lumens, or XLM, announced a strategic move to streamline their developer experience. In plain terms, they cleaned house in their software toolkit. Stellar has different tools for developers, especially those coding in Go. Until now, all the Go-related tools for Stellar were scattered in one giant sprawling code repository. Developers described it as one big messy garage, everything thrown together. To build anything, you had to rummage through poorly labelled boxes to find the right tool. Sometimes the tool you needed wasn't even in that garage. It was hiding in a separate repo altogether. I'm not exaggerating, the Stellar devs themselves said developers working on Stellar in Go have been stuck in a single, sprawling monorepo. They had to rely on weak naming conventions to locate components. And if they needed something like the RPC client, basically a way to talk to the Stellar network, they had to import it from a separate repository, like having to go to another store to get a part in the middle of your project. On top of that, making even a tiny change meant navigating a complicated continuous integration process, and some tools, like the Ingest SDK for pulling in data, were missed entirely because the structure was so convoluted. Now here's the big news. Stellar is fixing all of this with a unified Golang SDK, essentially one single toolkit for Go developers. They even renamed their Go repo to make it clear. It's now called Stellar slash Go Stellar SDK. In this new setup, all the important developer-facing packages live together under one roof. Only the reusable, needed packages stay in the main repository. No more scavenger hunts to figure out what's official and where to find it. It will be obvious what's part of Stellar's official SDK. If you're not a developer, you might wonder why this matters. But imagine trying to build a project when all your tools are scattered and unorganised. It's frustrating and time-consuming. By organising everything into one place, like having a neatly sorted toolbox, Stellar just made it a lot more inviting for developers to build on their platform. This clarity is a big deal. It makes it much easier for developers to adopt Stellar's tools and even contribute improvements. Before, if someone wanted to enhance Stellar or fix something, they had to wade through that swampy monorepo and probably second guess whether they were even looking in the right place. Now with a unified SDK, a developer can quickly find what they need and trust that if it's in the SDK, it's an official component. This move basically brings Stellar's Go environment up to par with some other languages. For example, Stellar's JavaScript and Python SDKs already had their Horizon API and RPC under one roof. So Go was the outlier until now. Stellar essentially said, we're going to give Go the same treatment and love that we gave our other communities. And it's not just a cleanup. It's part of a bigger strategy for a unified developer experience. The Stellar team wants to improve discoverability, meaning any developer who wants to build on Stellar can easily find the tools and documentation they need. They also want all the Stellar environments to feel familiar. If you can code on Stellar in Python, you should feel at home coding in Go, and vice versa. That consistency builds confidence and lowers the learning curve. The exciting part is that this change sets the stage for future upgrades. The team made it clear this is step one, not the final step. With the Go SDK now unified, they can help developers transition from the old Horizon API, Stellar's older way of interacting with the network, to the new Stellar RPC. Think of the Horizon API like an old telephone operator system. It works, but it's a bit indirect. Stellar RPC is like a direct line, 
faster and more straightforward. The unified SDK will make that switch smoother for developers, so over time we'll likely see more projects using the newer, more efficient RPC calls. They also mentioned adding a bunch of high-level abstractions, basically pre-built modules to handle complex tasks, which will be consistent across languages. So if you learn how to do something in Stellar's Python SDK, you could apply that knowledge in the Go SDK similarly and so on. It's like giving developers standardised building blocks no matter what language they use, making Stellar more accessible and attractive to build on. On top of all this, the Stellar team is working on something called X-Ray. They're laying the groundwork for it already. X-Ray is aimed at letting developers build privacy-focused applications on Stellar that are still compliance-friendly, using zero-knowledge cryptography. In simple terms, zero-knowledge proofs let you verify information without revealing the actual information. So in a Stellar context, that could mean transactions or data verifications that keep details confidential but can still satisfy regulators or rules. For us, it means Stellar might support advanced privacy features, like confidential transactions or identity verification where details stay private, in a way that institutions could actually use without running afoul of the law. It's a forward-looking feature, and the fact that Stellar is preparing for it now shows real vision. Now, all these changes feed into Stellar's bigger picture. Let's talk about IBM for a second. Yes, the IBM, the huge tech company, has been working with Stellar for a while on cross-border payments. Their project was called IBM Worldwire. IBM's vision is to create a unified global payment system, and they chose Stellar's network to power it. If IBM is serious about that, they need Stellar to be rock solid and easy for developers to work with. This SDK overhaul directly contributes to that, sending a signal that Stellar's platform is enterprise ready. Another important aspect, Stellar's XLM, is one of the few crypto assets that's compliant with the ISO 20022 standard for financial messages. That's the new global format banks are adopting to communicate payments information. Being on that list, alongside projects like XRP and Hedera Hashgraph, is a big green flag for potential bank and corporate adoption. It means Stellar's network speaks a language that traditional finance understands. Before we get ahead of ourselves though, let me drop a crucial reminder. This might shock you, but I'm not a financial advisor and nothing in this video is financial advice. Cryptocurrencies are highly volatile and you could lose all the money you invest. Always do your own research and consult a qualified professional. Your investments are entirely your responsibility and nothing is ever guaranteed in investing. Neither I, this channel, nor YouTube is liable for any losses. This video is for entertainment and educational purposes only. Now let's look at what's going on with XLM's price. XLM is trading around 23 cents at the moment. In the past day, it's up maybe 0.32%, essentially flat. Over the last week, XLM is down roughly 7%. Over the last month, it's down about 24%. Those are significant declines. But from a long-term perspective, this kind of news is exactly what I love to see. It's like hearing that a company you invested in just upgraded their machinery or hired a genius engineer. It might not spike the stock price today, but it sets the stage for future success. Investing in developer experience is investing in Stellar's future. If it becomes easier and more appealing to build on Stellar, more developers will do it, leading to more applications, more users, and potentially more demand for XLM. Now, let me give you a quick personal example. I've been experimenting with something called Unity Nodes. These are software licenses that let your devices like smartphones, join a decentralized network doing telecom-related tasks. Each license allows up to 200 devices. I started testing with 10 phones just to see how it works. These phones verify signals or gather data and generate rewards. I can get paid in Bitcoin, Ether, Cardano ADA, or even XRP. It's just something I'm exploring, not financial advice. But it reminds me of Stellar. It's not flashy, but the potential is there. Bringing the focus back to Stellar. The team is executing a thoughtful plan. Improve the foundation now, attract builders, and maybe reap the rewards down the line. The market is giving us time to evaluate and decide, and that's valuable. 
If all this interests you, or you want a place to learn more, join our free educational Discord. We talk about news like this, share research, and help each other grow. It's a chill, hype-free environment, and the link is in the description. To wrap up, it feels like we're in the calm before the storm with Stella. Technical upgrades, enterprise interest, and compliance check marks are all lining up. The broader market hasn't reacted yet. That contrast won't last forever. And thank you for watching. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. It really helps the channel and keeps the content flowing. I'll catch you in the next one.